Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Carly and today I'm gonna to be talking about my top 12, 12 favorite kitchen gadgets and tools that I think you need in your kitchen. So I've been baking for about 20 years now since I was a really little kid and actually started my own bakery business with my sister, hence the channel Trove Desserts. So we've learned so much through these years of baking and we narrowed down what gets us really consistent results every single time we make them so that anyone could go make a recipe and they would get the same result every time. I've wasted a lot of time, money, resources on tools that are honestly useless in the kitchen and take up space and are just cluttering up my mind. So these are the 12 kitchen gadgets and tools that every baker needs in their kitchen. Okay, the first thing on our list is a really important one. This is a kitchen scale, a digital kitchen scale. And once we started using this kitchen scale, it really changed our baking immensely. When we started operating our bakery, we immediately converted all of our favorite recipes to weights instead of imperial measurements that we're normally used to. And that's so that whenever we had anyone else making our recipe, it was always going to yield very consistent results every single time, no matter who was making it. It was especially important when we were trying to double or triple or 10 times a batch of cookies, for instance. Imperial measurements have a way of getting confusing, especially when you're multiplying your batch you might lose count and you forget how much flour you put in your bowl and have to restart from the very beginning but if you know the weight of the ingredient that you're looking for it's just done in a matter of seconds you have the right amount it's the perfect amount every single time so get yourself a scale this is an important one now with that said, every baker still absolutely needs a set of measuring spoons and measuring cups, as well as liquid measuring cups. A lot of recipes that you might find online are only in imperial measurements, so there's not any grams or anything, although I love using a scale. Sometimes it's just not an option unless you're willing to do all the work and convert it yourself. So that's why these are super handy. They're very important. And of course, a handy set of measuring spoons is essential as well for measuring your leavening agents, like your baking soda, baking powder, and of course, salt. You need some liquid measuring cups when you're measuring anything liquid, like oils, milks, honey. These do not work, and they end up just causing you to spill your liquids all over the place, and we don't want that. I am a bit partial to my liquid measuring cup. They're made by the brand Cambro. They are just the best because they actually have raised lettering on them. So no matter if I throw these in the dishwasher and the paint scratches off, these measurements will always stay on this cup. And I'm throwing in these ones as an example because these ones are just a couple of the glass measuring cups that we've been using over the years. And they're honestly useless at this point because all the paint has scratched off. So I have no way of determining how much one cup is in this measuring cup. So I really do prefer these Cambro ones or anything like that if you can find something similar. Just because it has that raised lettering, it's never gonna fade. So get yourself some of these ones. So our third favorite kitchen tool is something as simple as a knife. So I have two knives here. The first one is just a super sharp kitchen chef knife and I find this one works so well for honestly everything. It's great from cutting slices of butter, chopping chocolate, cutting fruit or apples or anything like that. You need to have a really sharp knife in your kitchen. Yeah, nothing more to say about that. And you also need a small, sharp kitchen paring knife as well. Certainly in cake decorating, I end up pulling this out more often than not, especially to clean up the cake board edge or to cut the excess icing on the top to get a really sharp edge on my cake. There's a lot of different uses for a small kitchen paring knife, and it's definitely a kitchen essential that I think you need to have. And remember, sharp knives save lives. And for our fourth kitchen gadget, I'm gonna talk about the KitchenAid stand mixer. Now, this is one of the largest kitchen items I'm talking about today, and it also happens to be the most expensive, but it is one of my favorite kitchen tools that I have. These things honestly seem indestructible. I push them to their limits, and they still work awesome every single time. I actually got one as a Christmas gift when I turned 20, I think I was. And I was so excited because I was an aspiring baker and I really wanted this to level up my baking game. 
and I've been using it for about 10 years and it's not slowing down. These things work amazing. So this one here, I have a stainless steel bowl on it, which I actually really love the stainless steel. I throw it in the dishwasher. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I do because it just cleans up so nicely. So the KitchenAid one in particular comes with three attachments. It comes with a paddle attachment that I have attached here. It comes with a dough hook and a whisk attachment. Now I don't actually use the dough hook too often. I usually pull it out around the holidays when I want to make some buns or maybe cinnamon buns for Christmas morning. The whisk attachment is awesome for making meringues and the paddle attachment is kind of the workhorse that I always go to. It makes my cookie dough, brownies, batters, all of the above. Now all that said, I do love my KitchenAid stand mixer, but it's not in everyone's budget and it's sometimes too big and bulky to pull out when you're just making a small thing. If it's not in your budget, I would opt for an electric hand mixer. These are awesome. They save you from having to hand mix everything, which if you've whipped up egg whites before, you'll know that you do not want to hand mix those. You need one of these and these are actually really affordable. So I have a KitchenAid one. I want to say this is about $50 or under, but there's even cheaper ones. If you go on Amazon, you can find ones that are between $20 and $30, and it's definitely a worthwhile investment in your kitchen. And I will mention that if I ever reference prices throughout this video, I'm talking about Canadian dollars because I live in Canada. <laughs> Mixing bowls. So having a set of mixing bowls is absolutely essential. I usually opt for stainless steel because I'm a bit of a clumsy mess in the kitchen sometimes and I drop things and I break them. So if it's glass, sometimes it's not the best for me. So sticking to <laughs> stainless steel is great. That being said, I do think it's important to have a glass mixing bowl or two in your kitchen for the sole purpose that sometimes I need to microwave something and stainless steel metal does not work in the microwave. So having a glass bowl that you can kind of throw in the microwave and mix things up, that's essential. I also see a lot of people using glass mixing bowls over like a Bain Marie or a double broiler, but I've cracked a lot of glass mixing bowls while I do that. So I usually opt for stainless steel, which will definitely conduct the heat so these will get hot. But if you're using an oven mitt or gloves, then you should be absolutely fine. I also just want to mention when I choose stainless steel mixing bowls, I usually try to find ones that are nice and deep instead of shallow. And the reason being when I'm using this with a, an electric mixer, for instance, I find that if it's too shallow, the batter ends up splattering all over the kitchen and all over myself, where if the walls are really high like this one, it contains the batter and whatever I'm working on really well. Cake pans. This one is definitely high on the list of must haves for me. And not just any cake pans, you need to invest in some really good quality, light aluminum colored cake pans and these ones specifically are Fat daddy -O brand. I am really partial to this brand. I just find that they bake everything up so nicely and honestly this discovery took me way too long to figure out. I used to use dark aluminum pans all the time or glass bakeware all of that, which sometimes I still pull out every once in a while. But when I wanna bake a really nice, consistent, evenly baked cake, these pans do the trick. So I recommend always having a square baking pan. This one is a nine inch pan. This is perfect for brownies, blondies, that kind of thing. As well as I also have one in a nine by 13, which is also just an essential size that you'll see in a lot of baked goods recipes online. In terms of cake pans, I have six inch pans here. And I also have eight inch pans. I, I really can't say enough good things about them. These are just amazing. The quality is fantastic. They don't warp like a lot of pans that I've tried before do. They have a really nice straight edge. For some reason, a lot of cake pans out there are flared on the edges, which if you're making a cake and you want a crisp, even edge, you don't want a flared cake pan. These were such a game changer in getting consistent baking results. Okay, let's keep going. I have six more items that I need to mention and I have a couple of honorary mentions that I'm gonna add at the very end as well. Ice cream scoops. These are so handy. So we use these in so many ways. I mean, the first thing being, you can obviously use them for ice cream if you choose to, 
but I usually use them for scooping our cookies. Using an ice cream scoop to scoop cookie dough is absolutely the way to go. Now I've scooped at least 50,000 cookies, so I definitely have my favorites and my go-tos. I feel like I'm an expert in this, the cookie scoop. <laughs> this style just doesn't hold up very well for whatever reason, at least in commercial uses it didn't. These ones just, I gotta say, they held up and worked really well. I have three different sizes here. The smaller one that I like is a 40. The medium one is a size 24. And the larger one is a size 20. But there are so many sizes in between these, so pick any size that works for you and the cookies that you wanna make. Next on the list, a cake turntable. Now, if you have been decorating cakes before, you might know what this is, and I really hope that you've invested and bought yourself a cake turntable. But these are essential to getting really smooth edges on your cake. I honestly don't know how you could really ice a cake without it. I just feel like it would be so hard to get the results that you're looking for. So these are actually really inexpensive. This is just a generic brand that I got off Amazon. I wanna say it's like under $20 or something like that. I'll link a few options for you down below. How it works basically is you have your cake on here and you twist the turntable around while smoothing the edge of your cake. So you're not having to kind of fidget and constantly shift your cake around on a table. The turntable is just essential for getting those really smooth edges. The one that you really want to avoid, do not get the flat one that's about an inch high. I bought one of those and it was absolute trash. It basically shifted and was fidgety every time I would try to ice the cake, which is not something that you want when you're icing the side of your cake. You want it to be a really smooth gliding finish. So get yourself a cake turntable. It's a necessity. So sticking with the cake decorating theme, I do a lot of cake decorating and we did so much at the bakery. I love an offset spatula and I really use both sizes. It's nice to have a large one and a small one and it just smooths out the top of your cake, the sides of your cake. It slathers on all the buttercream that you need. As you can see, the offset one has a bit of an angle here. When you're smoothing over a cake, it just, it angles it so nicely so you're not having to hold the, the spatula in a weird way. Or even like if I'm smoothing out icing on some brownies in a pan, these just are amazing. They are absolutely fantastic and they work so well when icing things. And they keep your fingers out of the icing, which is also pretty good. Unless you like to dip your fingers in the icing, then I guess. <laughs> Otherwise, these are good. Okay, now we're at number 10, which is my favorite cake scraper. You need one of these if you wanna decorate really nice, elegant, smooth buttercream cakes. I have my cake here, and basically you just guide this tool alongside the cake. This one's kinda cool, it's really cheap. Um, I've used it a ton, but it's nice because it has a smooth side, but it also has all these other options. So if you like to do different designs, or stripes in your buttercream, you can use this and get kind of different effects with it. So I like that about it. This is an essential item that every great baker needs to have, and that's a sieve. So I have two different sizes here. The larger size I use when I want to sift my dry ingredients to make sure that there's no clumps or anything in it. But I also go to my small sieve as well. And this just really works if I have a spice that is really clumpy, but it also works great when you want a little texture on the top of your cake. This just sprinkles everything evenly over the top of my surface. Number 12 is actually an immersion blender. So this is kind of a recent addition to my kitchen essentials that I really started using a lot. And these are awesome for when you're making a puree and you want a puree fruit compote for your dessert. This is amazing for that. Or another really cool thing that we just came across fairly recently was this TikTok hack that we saw where you can really intensify the color of your buttercreams just by using an immersion blender on them. You just blitz this through your buttercream and the color just intensifies. It somehow magically creates really deep colors. It seems like a magic trick every time we use them. So if you decorate a lot of cakes at home using food colorings, then I would recommend using this. Okay, now I have a few honorable mentions here. 
So first one is a heat resistant silicone spatula. These are really awesome. It scoops the batter. I wanna get every last little drop when I make cookies or cakes or everything like that. So this is really nice for scraping the inside of my bowls. A heat resistant one is really awesome when making caramels or something that you're cooking over a, an induction burner or a stove so that you're not burning plastic into your, your sauces. So these are just really great to have on hand. Next one is definitely a personal preference of mine. I really like juicing lemons with a lemon squeezer as opposed to doing it by hand. I do have eczema on my hands, which means I have a lot of cuts and cracks all the time. So squeezing a lemon by hand just really stings. There's nothing worse than getting lemon juice inside your cuts. If you're like me and you just wanna make your life easier, having a lemon squeezer is really nice. And I will say this one in particular is the absolute best. I have used other brands before. This one has a painted coating on top. And over time, if you can see, the paint has basically chipped and peeled away, which is not something that you want when you're making baked goods or food with lemon in it and you feel like you're getting some paint chipped inside your food. That is not what we want. But this one on the other hand, this one's by Chefin and the handle and everything is plastic. It's a really heavy duty plastic and this part is metal. So I'm not worried about any paint chipping or anything like that. This one just holds up really well and it works so good for squeezing my lemons. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> it works so good for squeezing lemons. <laughs> Okay, and lastly, this is for piping cupcakes and cakes, but we do a lot of that over here. And if you're like me, decorating cakes and making them look really pretty is so fun. So having disposable piping bags that are heavy duty is absolutely essential. We've tried so many different brands over the years, some that just completely explode when you put any pressure on them, which is absolutely not what we want. So we have found really, really great bags and I usually go for a 12 inch bag. I just find that to be the most versatile. These ones are awesome. Definitely be linking these down below for you. In addition to a collection of piping tips, we have a lot of piping tips here. Probably some of my favorites are the 1M piping tip in addition to this 125 piping tip, which is a petal tip. And we actually recently did a cupcake video on how we ice our cupcakes and we always use this piping tip. So these ones are a couple of favorites, but it's really nice to have an assortment. If you see my Barbie cake tutorial, we used quite an assortment of different piping tips and it really was cool for that vintage style cake design to have all these different looks all on one cake. So I definitely recommend an assortment of piping tips. Okay, and that's all my 12 favorite kitchen essentials with a couple honorary mentions as well. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. And let me know in the comments down below if something inspired you or you wanted to add to your kitchen gear setup. We really hope that you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn that bell notification on to see more videos that we come out with. We hope that you found this helpful and we can't wait to see you guys in the next one.